Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. We've got quite a lineup for you today, and uh, probably one of the most important filmmakers who actually mutated into a truth, or probably before anybody, myself, Alex Jones, or anyone, is the in, indomitable Anthony J. Hilder. And we call, uh, you have what I call Hilderisms, which are some of the best one liners I think out there. I think that you must have a distant rel- relation to Groucho Marx and some of the great comedians of the past century, because uh, like Jack Benny, because some of them, when you make these statements in your films with your eyebrows twitching, it makes it not only humorous, but it kind of gets through, because sometimes humor and sometimes a metaphor or a turned word can make more of a point than even a film of an actual process, a crime, or anything else going on. So, Anthony, uh, you've got some new films coming out. What is your way main Man website? Is Against the Machine. And Ooh. I'm taking a look at the machine as uh, something like Metropolis, something like the Fritz Lang movie in the 30s with uh, uh, those precursors to uh, Adolf Hitler, those who were trying to bring about a new world order, the uh, Nietzschean um, supremacist. And I believe we know of a Nietzschean supremacist. Yeah, we, we, we need not mention his name, although we can, those who are of intelligent order uh, can calculate out uh, by uh, induction who that personage or entity may, we, may well be, but we don't want to mention it because negative intention is almost as good as positive intention. Well, I think maybe somebody wants some attention. Ah, I don't want to I get into so. uh, deagleism here, but uh, <laughs> there, there is somebody who may want attention or uh, uh, a couple that might want attention. Uh-huh. Well, let, let's start off with uh, the latest about smart meters, because we have lots to cover today. The first thing is people are constantly asking me, Dr. Deagle, they want me to hold their hand. And the best thing I can do is I'm so swamped with hundreds of emails a week, I can't hold your hand, but I can give you the pathway. What I'm doing, actually, because I just got my notice from San Diego Gas and Electric and the California Public Utility, that if I don't respond by June 15th to accept extortion of $75 initial and $10 a month in order for them to read my meter, they're going to take it as acceptance of the smart meter program and come back, even though I've warned them, if they come back to put on a smart meter on my host, which I told them they will never put on, I'm coming out with my shotgun. But before I do my shotgun, actually, I'm just being hyperbole here, what I'm doing is I'm actually filing a preventive injunction. Now, here's what you need to do in whatever state you're in. A preventive injunction basically says a number of reasons as to why you don't want to do that. And that boilerplate injunction I should have prepared and ready within a week I'll post that up on my website so you'll see what a preventive injunction is. The second thing you can do is what's called an affidavit of evidence. The affidavit of evidence is evidence that deals with three major areas. The first area is overbilling because we're going to file a federal RICO suit, which is racketeering. The second area is medical hazards that deals with the hazards that's not UL certified, any of these. And by the way, it turns out that the cities and the municipality and the villages or state or whatever, the local authorities actually have the authority over, over non-UL certified devices being put in, and all of these smart meters, not a one of them from any of the companies, GE or whatever, are UL certified. So they're a radio hazard. They also, by the way, cause frequency drift, so they cause fire hazards. And the third area is a wiretapping fraud, because these are wiretapping fraud where they've been instituted elsewhere on the basis of Agenda 21. They're actually... Uh, can turn off your appliances remotely through what's called the Zigbee network, which is a secondary frequency network where the smart meter will communicate with your appliances and shut them off. So, you know, recent story is... Well, wait, 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 a smart meter is a dumb meter. It's uh, Well, it's um, smart enough to turn off your, your appliances. It's a dead meter, but it's smart enough to do that. But uh, yeah. then any dictatorial um, operation tries to put you into a vice and then squeeze that vice till the point uh, that uh, your blood has rushed out of your your uh, your body and you can't function yeah, but, any longer but, but, but dr deagle is, is is not a passive rat i'm a rat with long titanium teeth and and hardened titanium fangs and claws okay i'm not going to put up with this now what we have to do is we have to uh, the first thing is i say just like in uh you know, I, when I teach people, what I call the uh, the art of of Deagle Zen, if you want to call. It. First off, fear is the elixir of death. You cannot be fearful. 
if you're going to be a truther, if you're going to make films like you do, whether it's being fearful of other people that think they're telling the truth or people that want to spit on you or want to even give you death threats, if you drink any fear, you're not in the right place. You have to realize that you're walking into it. As I call it my, I'm a messianic believer, and I can tell you, it, being a believer is not the milk and cookie Christianity. I often see it most of the churches or the milk and cookie I call lame brain media out there. And of course, your films and what we do here in Genesis and on the Nutramedical Report is not lame brain. This is not for the faint of heart. This is for kicking you in the side of the head intellectually, giving you a kiss saying we love you, but we're going to tell you the truth no matter how ugly it is, and now you have to take this knowledge and do something about it. You can't just say, oh gee, somebody else will do it. Dr. Deagle's going to hold my hand and do it. No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you what to do, and you need to get your butt moving. Now, it may be joining a lawsuit if we get Jonathan Emore's legal group in Phoenix, five attorneys that are uh, once they see my suits moving forward because the average person if you file in federal court the suit that I'm going to do would cost between 500,000 and 2 million just to file it. I'm doing it myself, okay? Pro se litigant and I'm hiring attorneys to do various pieces of it right now on my ticket, okay? So when people say they want me to, you know, hold them their hand when they file, let's say, a small claims court or a little administrative action in the state. All the boilerplates and all the shows are right there. You can do it yourself. If you just listen to the shows and go back through the documents, we even posted up the statutes on Friday. I had uh, information sent to me by Rob States. There's no excuse. So, you know, if you passively think that we're just going to do everything for you, if you aren't actively being a citizen to prevent the monsters from eating you alive, well... Put on the salt and the spices. Get yourself buttered up because you're going to be an hors d'oeuvre for the monster called the New World Order. And if you think it's imaginary, well, you'll soon find out the hard way. It's not I imaginary. Had a, I had a late, uh, <clears throat> a late friend, uh, Mel Belli, the attorney. Uh, he had come to uh, Alaska, and uh, he had been on my show many times. Uh, <clears throat> and we had discussed the, the Valdez situation where the... Um, ship went uh, aground and uh, it went into the water and created immense problems. His son, Caesar Belli, is still in practice uh, in San Francisco, uh-huh. and I hope to uh, to meet with him to discuss a lawsuit against PG&E against Southern California Electric. <clears throat> we have to. In well, I know I, I, lawsuits. I've, I've been uh, researching this since last year, so I'm now a medical legal expert on it. I know the statutes. I know the federal law. I know what we need to do, and we need to stop wasting our time with just uh, pro se litigant action, doing things like small claims court. Yeah, it's good to do. It'll be aggravating. It's like going up to a, you know, a brontosaurus and whacking it with a big stick. It pisses off the brontosaurus, but it doesn't make the brontosaurus stop eating the leaves on your special trees in your front yard. Well, so, there has been one. <clears throat> lawsuit that has been launched in Northern California against PG&E, and I hear that, that ha- it has been won. Now, of course, yeah, we But is it in the, state uh, court or federal court? If it's in state court, here's my point. Any lawsuit won in state court doesn't take the CPUC administrative law judges or the commissioners uh, personally responsible, which we need to make uh, basically on a 1984 Ketam Section 842 uh uh, lawsuit. <clears throat> it doesn't say literally seize their physical assets or put them in jail. It doesn't say that when a commissioner or let's say the city council or someone else that says it's okay to have non-UL certified devices that can cause a fire, like I talked to uh, uh, Mr. Boyd, who actually filed a suit about what's called the uh, the pipe bomb effect of uh, switching mode power supplies and, and smart meters that caused the San Bruno explosion. He filed that they... F- messed around for a year and a half and then just turfed it out in state court. So the only action that's going to eventually put teeth into their bones is going to be a federal action because state actions will aggravate them. They'll put on a opt-out program. in the classroom here and with the uh, Yoda of Filmworks and Broadcasting, uh, Anthony Hilder, and he's going to teach our audience a lesson here, and or maybe uh, 
uh, those people who really don't think there's a problem, I want to go over the website addresses first, though. And by the way, we're building a replicated website uh, subpage over a clay and iron of uh, all the films. And the latest uh, one is the Man Against the Machine, which I guess is a uh, interesting play back to that that film that was done on Metropolis back. It was very very kind of uh, Art Deco ish. You know, very advanced. It's almost like Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Uh, and um, the websites are freeworldfilmworks.com, ourenglanduk.com, commoncrime.net, common crime. It's single, not crimes, right? It's, that's correct. Yeah. And then the other one is aircrap.org, which, of course, is the chemtrails, which should people think it's not happening. The only primary function you have to do is to tilt your head up from the horizon to just above the horizon on a nice sunny day where you see the sky become a hot cross bun like in the old English tradition, where you see stripes that don't disappear like a normal contrail, but a chemtrail that expands for hours and the sky becomes a milky, messy, horrifying looking like, what the heck happened to my nice sky? So um, let's go back to what we're talking about. First off, why would they put smart meters in? What is the crime? You, let, you know, now we are in the classroom. We, we are in grade one. Um, we're, first of all, mm, the crime mm. is control. Ah, Controlism. Okay. We're going to create a new ism. I mean, we're going to talk about a new ism, and it's controlism. Right. It's, 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 it's communism. It's Nazism. It's communazism. It's Zionazism. It's all of the isms that go to control us. From erection to resurrection, yeah, they want to control us. They need to control us. They have a thirst, a passion, if you will. We're going to be at the Bohemian Grove on the 13th of uh, July and 14th. We're going to be with some of the... Uh, group that wears those funny masks, the, the Guy Falk masks, and who are calling for the return of this country and England to the rightful owners, which are the people. I want to call for the exhumation of the, uh, the digging, the unearthing of the babies that have been that have been uh, slaughtered there, that have been sacrificed there, we want to have a dig. We need to have that. We need to prove that they have murdered people, sacrificed people, <clears throat> for their Lord Satan. They have a Lord Lucifer. Well, uh, let me let me give you some. Uh, without giving specific names, I have talked to people. I'm sure you have too where body parts have been found down the Russian River from the Bohemian Grove of children and adults that have actually ended up becoming part of the burning of care, which involves human sacrifice. And I, have heard, I have heard that, <clears throat> but uh, I want to find out hard-core documentation where we oh, can... We'll take ground-penetrating radar. We, we it's very put easy this to, up. You can walk around the place with a ground-penetrating radar if you have an injunction. Uh, say you're looking for forensic evidence with a ground-penetrating radar, and you can pick up human bones pretty easily. And they won't be more than 6 to 10 feet low, so you can, should be able to pick them up pretty quick, literally hauling a cart over the area with a, a golf cart. You should be able to pick it up pretty quickly, just having one person watch the screen in the back in the golf cart, and the other person is driving. I mean, it's that simple. <clears throat> Now the, the the cadaver dogs. I mean, they're good. they they walk around there and they can smell out. Yeah, that's a good. You get, what I do first is bring your cadaver dogs first, and a dog sniffed, and the golf cart and the GPR comes after. How's that? Well, we want to actually <clears throat> physically do this. We want to plan for it. Well, you, you give need them, to get an injunction give them first. The, the plan, and uh, and we'll carry this thing out. If you want to do an injunction. And you can also do it in an injunction on historical grounds, because what happened is they'll say that they stopped doing sacrifice, say, in the 1920s or 30s. You can date the bones and find out how long ago they were still doing it, because you can know there's body parts there. And the other thing is, even besides the grounds, I'm certain that down the river 
uh, from the Russian River, the apparently body parts drifted for some miles because sometimes the bodies were probably thrown in the river. Well, Christine, uh, with uh, Russia Today, uh, said, well, th- this is only, uh, this is only uh, ritualistic. They're, they're, they're not actually doing this anymore. Oh, yeah, sure. And she was saying this to me, and, and we had a conversation last yeah. year on RRT. Well, now, I want the cadaver dogs to be out there, and I need to see some publicity about this. And I thank you, my friend, for giving us the publicity <clears throat> and on our films and our new film, um, which is actually about um, the uh, Malthusian-minded men who think of themselves as superior to everybody who are conducting these ritual killings. Uh, These individuals consider it necessary to sacrifice children. They they figure that this, this this is all right. It's acceptable. It is not acceptable. It is not now acceptable. It will never be acceptable to sacrifice children for their Lord Lucifer. And yes, they do have a Luciferian Illuminati. It exists. Now, Anthony, I just wanted to kind of step back a little bit to to explain how, using a little metaphor, when when you see uh, a a nature show and you see the wildebeest out in the uh, African savanna, and there's a jungle nearby or little hills, and you see the lion and the lionesses all getting ready to attack. And they watch the wildebeest for a while, and they kind of pick out a weak wildebeest. The lions and the lionesses, which are part of nature, consider themselves just good lions when they take down an old wildebeest, right? But mankind is capable of not only just killing the weak and the the elderly so that they can have dinner, uh, just like the native peoples would never try to kill all of their the animals, otherwise there'd be no ongoing supply of animals or food for them. They even would take their dead and hang them in the trees so that the wild beasts could eat their dead relatives so they would recycle back into the into the environment, right? But we talk about a Nietzschean superiority. Exactly. Now, the point is that these people think they're doing the right thing. See, this is something that's very hard for us to get our head around. When they put in chemtrailing to change the bio, the uh, Earth's magnetic field and protect it against the coronal mass ejection, they're not worried about the rest of the population. When they're building underground cities, like feverishly at trillions of dollars a cost, when they're stacking vaccines, making GM food, not fixing Fukushima, which is poisoning human reproduction, and babies in the utero are 100 million times more sensitive to the radiation causing birth defects and trisomy, 28% at least, and this is already admitted, of the pregnancies in Japan are spontaneously in northern Japan miscarried because of Fukushima. And here in America, they already estimate in the first three to four months, at least 20,000 babies in the intensive care nurseries died prematurely just because of Fukushima. And the problem is getting worse. And they won't fix it because they're the ultimate predators, just like alien predators. We have Anthony J. Hilder again. We've been in the classroom here. And, of course, the websites just repeat them are freeworldfilmworks.com. Uh, we're also putting a replicated site for Anthony and all his amazing films over at clayandiron.com. Uh, ourenglanduk.com, Common Crime, that's a single, commoncrime.net, and aircraft.org that deals with the chemtrails. The latest film is Man Against the Machine. And... Um, we have lots of crimes going on, and people need to kind of get their head around this, because a lot of time we get accused that we're in the uh, CIA. Uh, this is a, one of the common, what I call, I- idiot comments that's made. I call it the Closet in- Intelligence Association. You know, Somehow we know things, and because we know things or even ask questions, we must be in some kind of secret agency. You know, we're actually some of the few citizens that actually have the titanium, not brass or even steel, but titanium cajones that we're willing to ask questions and we're willing to pursue the answer like a bloodhound to find out what the heck is going on and doing something about it. Like, I'm filing my own blood, sweat, tear, and money lawsuit against the smart meters. I'm doing my, of other lawsuits, federal lawsuits and other ones, and I'm working with other affiliates, 
And people can hop on those after the fact, but please don't ask me to try to do your lawsuit for you. If you listen and get the Jurisdictionary course, which you can get through Nutramedical.com, if you listen to our shows and we have Ron McDonald on, if you look at all the archives and you just can put in Smart Meter, you'll see tons of documents. And, of course, if you wanted to go to contact uh, Deborah Tavares, a super activist, and get the films that Anthony has produced on this, you're going to get filled with so much information, you're not going to know what to do with it. So, well, Deborah Tavares is winding up in a lot of our films, and we're, get, we're getting ready to finish up still another one, which is talking about the murder meters which is talking about the uh, Nietzschean supremacy of Leopold and Loeb. These are two uh, gay young men in the Chicago area whose fathers uh, were pretty much in control over the uh, uh, conspiracy or the machine, I should say, the machine back there in, uh, in Chicago. They are referred to in this particular movie because... There's so many similarities between what is happening in various townships, Santa Cruz, Santa Monica, uh, certainly in Northern California, uh, where people in the city council and in the Board of Supervisors simply assume a position of authority. And I guess this is guided by the University of Chicago, uh, who have uh, sent out their candidates for city mayors, for, uh, for uh, city mayors. And when I say city mayors, I'm talking about city managers have, have assumed the roles of what once was city mayors. They are being paid in the Santa Cruz area in excess of a quarter of a million dollars, more than the President of the United States. They tell the city councils what to do. They tell the people what to do. They assume a position of authority. They are assuming a position of, of uh, superiority. And the uh, <clears throat> Leopold and Loeb were two gay young men that murdered the 14-year-old Jewish boy and uh, said this was okay. It was all right. It was acceptable because they could do what they damned well pleased. And it's the same attitude amongst those who were at, at the Bohemian Grove. Well, wait, if there's any shred of uh, conscience left, they try to extinguish it. See, people need to understand they're learning how to be good, bad dragons. And they also get try to pat each other on the back. It's like there's a good scripture in the Old Testament. And of course, I know that because you have a Jewish background, Anthony, you understand this, that every man did what was right in his own eyes. When we have Bill Clinton at the Bohemian Grove or George Bush Sr. or major actors, etc., like Ronnie Reagan, when they're sitting around and they're at the, you know, the hillbilly club, cabins or the other ones, and they go out to an event and the owl and they have the, they're wearing their robes and they have their, 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 their gold masks on and they have their, 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 their staff with a, with a goat's head on it and they're doing their ceremonies and saying all their prayers and either ritually, which isn't real, or really committing some form of human sacrifice. They're trying to basically summon up and destroy any part of humanity that's still left a shred of conscience because it interferes with them being the predator species or super species that they need to be in the corporations, the governments, the senior intelligence agencies, so they can predatorily control and crush humanity. That's what it's all about. By the way, I'm very uh, interested in how uh, some of the people, uh, some of our critiques are going out and saying, well, uh, we're Jewish, we are um, uh, m uh, part of the Mossad, ah, and then, on, then, then they say that we're anti, that we're anti-Jewish, we're anti-Semitic. Well, the Zionazis are anti-Semitic. Well, exactly. Yeah. In fact, and I think you were the, the first Zionazis one. Zionazis are anti-Islam. They're anti-Christian, and mm -hmm. they continue to 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 come forth with uh, this. Crit uh, critique. It, it doesn't. It's from cognitive dissonance. Different angles. I mean, you can't be. You can't how have can, both. How, how can you be? You can't uh, have it both ways, can you, Anthony? You can't have it both. Well, it's it's three or four ways. 
Right. Yeah. This isn't well, first a off, a let, let, let's is, talk about the reality here. Is you this have is Jewish a blood. Quad. Yeah, yeah. You have Jewish blood. Okay, so you can't be anti-Semitic. First off, I have on my mother's side. I'm descended from Cohen. So when anybody says I'm anti-Semitic, I have uh, Lebanese Christian blood, Cohen blood, Jewish blood, uh, Median blood, Syrian. This is just the most stupid thing. It's like talking to a black man from central Congo that you're kind of, you, you know, that you don't like, quote, N-I- the N-word, okay? The yeah. fact is, it's just ridiculous. Now, the fact is, what we want to do is we want to dissect away. It's almost like saying to anybody, because they're Italian, that they must be a member of the Sicilian mob. And they could be an actress or a doctor or a scientist just because they're Italian, saying that anybody who's Italian somehow must have a certain kind of thing because this is the... This is the uh, the the aura that comes around being Italian. Or if you say anything against anybody, you must be, quote, a Holocaust denier or you believe in all kinds of foolishness, right? The fact is we need to dissect away evil no matter what its so-called skin color is or well, religious our, group or our whatever. Our new film, our new film... <sighs> Naziistic cabal right. that exists deals with a new word. It's it's not only Nazism; it's commune Nazism, which is right. uh, Hitler said basically National Socialism and Marxism are the same. The whole of National Socialism is based on it. And we have the Zion Nazis. And people say, oh, you're talking about the Zion Nazis. You've got to be anti-Semitic. No, you've got to be nuts if you, don't, if, you, if you haven't figured out that Israel, or those people who control Israel, are creating the wars right. against not only the people in the, the United States, but the people of England, the people of the world. The war against uh, Libya, the war against Syria, the war against uh, yeah. Iraq, the but, war but, th- that they're planning yeah, against yeah, Iran. Right. Yeah, these are new kinds of wars, though, and I, I think you're the best filmmaker to make it. This is you're the best filmmaker to kind of crystallize this. The war against Syria and Iran is a new kind of war that's never been waged before, and it started with Libya and Tunisia and these other countries with the so-called Arab Spring that was networked literally three and a half years ago in New York City when and in London when they actually met and specifically strategized how to use Facebook and Twitter so they could literally hand out you know cell phones and other means of communication and satellite phones so they could use these network these social networking media to literally start the Arab Spring Revolution which is to put in a Muslim Masonic Caliphate from to, from Morocco all the way to Indonesia, in line perfectly with the New World Order. We want to call it the uh, Ultimate Predators. We'll be back in a moment with more. Nancy J. Hilder again. Lots of amazing information to discuss. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is pretty simple. Wake up. Uh, if you're listening to the Genesis Network, in particular if you're listening to this show, you're going to hear things on a deeper scientific and technical level. You're also going to hear legal action points. We're not just going to hold your hand and say, we're doing it all for you. All you got to do is listen. And we're not asking for your financial contributions. We want you to pick up the boilerplate of what we're doing, get the films, wake up your neighbor, because the most important thing is to wake up. People need to be prepared for disasters. One of my favorite, what I call comedy as well as reality films, is Doomsday Preppers. But you've been working on this for years trying to wake people up, uh, Anthony, and you'll use anything. Go back to the classroom, go back to square one to teach people. They well, don't we even really, know. Bill, Bill, we really have to incite a revelation, and a, we have to incite an awakening. Right. The fact is that nanoparticulates containing uranium are being dispersed out of the skies because they are caught up 
in this toxic mix to make the toxic sky. You can go to toxicsky.org. I believe it's uh, done with uh, Deborah Tavares. She's talking about this with her passion, with her heart, with her soul. Those going up to protest on the 13th and the 14th of, of July outside of the Bohemian Grove. We'll be talking about it. We've done a film. Um, we're talking about the neo-Nazism. We're talking about communism. We're talking about uh, the activity that goes on there perpetually, year after year after year. We have to attack these people through exposure. We've got a new film on that, uh, Bohemian, uh, uh, Bohemian Grove, and it's, uh, it's called uh, Bilderberg West's Communazi, Neo-Nazi. And it's the same thing that's happening in Israel that is being conducted, the same war is being conducted against the Islamic world. And it is God-awful. Because you, you go to Lebanon, you go to um, Gaza, and you see depleted uranium. You see the warheads, the, 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 the warheads with the, the uh, ordnance. It has the, the head, the, uh, <clears throat> the head of the ordnance has a particular configuration that indicates that, that they are they're killing people. How this is allowed by by nations? Well, it was considered it, beyond. It, was, it was considered after the Second World War that depleted uranium was considered a violation of the Geneva Accord. It was considered a dangerous biological weapon. In fact, it was proposed to be used in, this, in the 1940s, and they said, "No, no, this would violate the, the war crimes." And uh, yet, afterward, even when they did research as early as the 1970s and 80s, they developed what's called zirconite glass penetrators that would have made it necessary to. Uh, could switch over to zirconium alloy penetrators that could work very effectively at penetrating tanks so there would be no need for DU munitions. They didn't. They, In fact, what they wanted to do is recycle the depleted uranium waste from nuclear reactors because all it basically is taking all the nuclear waste, which a lot of it is coming from the reactors, and saying, hey, we can't bury this, we can't move it even off the site from these nuclear reactors, let's just turn it into weapons-grade depleted but is, uranium. It is not the Zion Nazis. Is it not truth, the truth, that the Zionazis and the American elite, the Nietzschean supremacists, are foisting this upon the people of the earth. Is this not a crime against the world? And should we not be conducting lawsuits against them for these crimes? Yeah. Is, wow. is there any way that we can avoid not doing that. I believe it is essential. If you write to me or call me or go to uh, uh, commoncrime.net, aircrap.org, freeworldalliance.com, uh, go to any of these sites. You're going to find out that we have information which will prove conclusively that crimes have been committed against our children the the the, the dumping of the uh, of the nanoparticulates upon us the radiation that is coming from these uh, smart meters the murder meters is a fact it's not fiction we must do this uh, the, the films that we make uh, like on uh, uh, Zionazi which is uh, in, in the process of being made the films that we make on um, Man Against the Machine with Gary Richard Arnold, the films that we make with uh, Deborah Tavares, and hopefully, Bill, we're going to get you actually on film soon talking about this. We need your expertise. You're going to get a new, revised, updated, and angrier and more determined uh, Dr. Deagle that's in uh, top fighting form. Well, we hear that you've trimmed down a bit, and you have to trim down some more, my friend. Well, guess what? This, I mean, I, this, this I, is a war against these uh, uh, 
and I can't really say people. It's a well, different it, breed. It's a different breed of individual who can accept. Let, let, let's, let's refer to them as as entities. How's that? All right, we'll do that. But the war has to be conducted. We have to initiate these uh, lawsuits. And you cannot have, like, the, at the Sutro Towers, uh, that, that thing go up in San Francisco, and uh, the, initially it killed in excess of 100 children, the radiation from the Sutro Towers. We've got another film being made with Deborah Tavares, and hope, hopefully you're going to be in this, and um, Dr. Spencer. And he is he's a, really a great, great guy. Uh, Dr. Spencer is uh, talking about the Sutro Towers. He's talking about uh, the crimes that are being conducted against us. Well, people have to understand what's, what scalar radiation is. And there's thermal, which means it heats up the tissue and non-thermal radiation effects. Non-thermal does two things. It disrupts cell membranes and it stimulates enzymes. And when it disrupts cell membranes, it creates what's called ions. It means ions are basically free radicals that destroy the neural lipid bilayer and the enzymes. And the other is enzyme induction, where it can actually induce enzymes to cause free radicals or cellular DNA damage. The effect of scalar radiation from cell towers and smart meters, which you can measure with the gigahertz solution, HF35C and other equipment we have, we've talked about on the show, is a quantifiable thing that you can actually take a scanning electron microscope and see in the extracellular space and inside the cell ring chromosomes, disrupted DNA, little clumps of DNA stuck on the wrong chromosome. This is not something that's theoretical like, oh, that's just your opinion, Dr. Deagle. See, I don't like to say things unless, number one, it's not an opinion, but it's based on facts. And people have a right to their opinion, but now they don't have a right to the facts. The facts are the facts, and that's what I like about your films. You present the facts, and you do it in such a way which is not only humorous, but also bring it back to square one. So even if they either don't want to initially listen to the truth, or they don't believe you, the fact is they're going to see this information, smack them straight in the face, and like, as much as their opinion may be the exact opposite, they have to look and say, he might have a point. Well, the Illuminati is what mm -hmm. it is. We have uh, what, this one film, Illuminati. Uh, Bilderberg West, Bohemian Grove. It's as simple as that. These entities and or these groups, these Kabbalists, work together to bring about a new world order. They are criminally united. And uh, I take a look at uh, the Nazism under Adolf Hitler and the Nazism that is happening in Israel. And I'm not talking about being conducted by Jews, but against Jews. Against them, right. In fact, if they start a war, uh, most of the people, Jewish, Arab, Christian, whatever, living in the state of Israel will die from the consequences of either regional war that's nuclear or the release of chemical and biological weapons from a preemptive attack, which they're already planning and trying to execute soon. It's just insane. It's demonic. And in hour three, we're going to have Rob, Bob Roselli talk about the Environmental Crucification <laughs> Agency, a good term, and how it's a form of terrorism. We're going to talk about the EPA and much more. Hour two coming up, our Health and Wellness Hour and new technology is always available. This week, we're going to be having on the program a new technology, the Metathera, a home version with some advancements on pulse magnetic field that's much more affordable for the people. The real powerful PMT we're going to be talking about in hour two, which is a big kahuna. I thank back you, Dr. Bill. Take care, Ezra. We'll have you back soon. Vio con Dios.